Hey everyone and welcome back to the Nerdy Multiverse and yet another breakdown. Today we will be breaking down and giving our thoughts on the second episode of the Negan and Maggie spin-off series, The Walking Dead, Dead City. The second episode being titled, Who's There? And this episode starts off right where we left off with Negan and Maggie in the first one after they locked themselves in the room and had their light blown out by a random lady. As walkers are trying to get through the door and you could basically say that this is a callback to the iconic Don't Open Dead Inside Door from the very first episode of the original series. The lady who we learn is named Esther blew out their match and took their bag and everything in it. So of course, they go after her. They end up following her up the ladder into the top of the building where they eventually get to a zip line where she crosses to the other building, but then welcomes them to follow her over and passes a zip line back to them. Negan goes first as Maggie is clearly afraid of height and isn't too keen on doing this, but walkers are coming in, so she sort of has to. Negan gets across just fine, so Maggie gets on, a little hesitant, but then we hear the music coming from the vehicle that lures herds away or towards different locations, which is where she sort of slips off and doesn't get a good enough boost to go full speed to the next building, as she slows down and stops right near the end, where Negan tries offering her his help, showing that he really isn't out to get her here in his truly trying to help her get Herschel back, but of course, she declines and gets up herself. Then, cutting to a settlement that I assume is one that Maggie helped form when she went off with Georgie, as it is not the original Hilltop itself, but it could be the new version of it after the original one was basically destroyed by the Whisperers. This is where we catch up with Jenny for a bit as Nina introduces her to the settlement, and she gets brought into the schooling here, where they actually introduce her as coming from Oceanside. Obviously, she didn't come from that exact settlement, but the fact that she is from the New York area near the shorelines counts as Oceanside, it seems. But I'm not entirely too sure on that. We then cut back to the city, which looks great in these different shots that we see throughout this episode, by the way, as Maggie and Negan catch up with Esther, who's looking through their bags, and Maggie snatches it back from her. Esther then offers Negan some of her food while speaking in a different language, and I believe that she is speaking Hebrew here. Negan of course makes friends with this lady, and I mean, who wouldn't, and he takes the food, then asking her if she can take them to the building that appears on fire. Now, Esther completely strays away from that idea, as Negan even doubles down on that himself, too. We then finally see what happened to Pearlie as we cut back to him as he regains his consciousness, after what happened to him in the last episode. Looking at his gun that was left in the open as his other fellow marshal walks past, obviously now turned into a walker, which looks his way, but then continues to walk on. Pearlie looks back at the piece of paper with the address on it that reads, Joel Armstrong, Oliver Street, Apartment 505. Now, I originally thought that this was going to be some sort of new Babylon Marshall hideout in Manhattan, but it is clearly not. And we do learn what it is later on in this episode. And again, cutting back to Maggie and Negan as they are led downstairs by Esther, but then held at gunpoint by some of her friends or family, Tommaso and Amaya, where Negan tries to offer friendship and an alliance to them, saying that they can help them with whatever they need, but Tommaso says that they do not need their help because this is their city, and there are thousands of them. They end up asking where Negan and Maggie are from, and Maggie decides to make up a fake story about how they were headed up north to a settlement in Canada, but got washed on shore by a storm, and they are there to get supplies and go on their way again. Again. But obviously, they even know that this is a blatant lie. So they take them to their place and hand their weapons over to Luther, who is clearly their muscle of the group. And Tommaso takes them to a dirty bathroom where they will be held for now. Going back to Ginny at the settlement that I'm just going to refer to as the New York Hilltop Colony or something like that, where Nina reassures Ginny that if she needs anything, she can find her. Where Ginny just sits down on the bed and then we zoom into the hallway as the sun goes down down and we transition right into a flashback scene. As Maggie walks into the room and starts talking to Herschel about missing weapons training once again, the third time this month, specifically the bow staff training. Obviously, the bow staff was the iconic weapon of Morgan Jones, and he, of course, trained Benjamin and Henry, who ended up training Lydia for a bit. Maggie tries to give Herschel a lecture and a lesson about how important it is to train and be ready for anything, especially with the state 
state of the world today. But he just seems to not have a care in the world for anything right now and clearly has a big amount of anger shelled within himself. We see that he does have a hobby however as he likes drawing and is clearly very good at it, as he is drawing some superheroes. Now I think it would be kind of cool to see another invincible easter egg within this show and this franchise and have him draw some of those characters, like we saw in season 11 of the original series. The flashback ends as Herschel leaves to go over to a friend's house as Maggie just sits there taking a deep breath and likely reflecting on how she just wants to have a normal relationship with her own son, especially if anything bad were to happen like it did with Glenn. Then cutting back to the bathroom that Maggie and Negan are being held in where they talk for a while as we can see Negan sharpening something on the wall. One thing eventually leads to another, reaching to the point of talking about the Croat, which is where we learn his backstory. Diving into the backstory of the Croat, as Negan says, once the world went down the path that it did, the Croat showed up at Negan's door, evidently having to go through some of the worst things imaginable in his past, so Negan decided to take him in. Which to me shows he hasn't ever really been a purely evil guy. He just had to do things when he had to do things, especially when it came to the safety of his own people, if you get what I mean by that. He then says that the Croat had a way of reading people, toying with them or pulling them apart. So he was obviously Negan's torturer, but he took it way too far. During one of their very first skirmishes with the kingdom before Rick and the group showed up, they found a person holed up in a car, and Negan assumed she was just a drifter. So he gave the orders to let her walk free, but the Croat did not do that and saw it differently, and thought that she had beans to spill, which it turns out that she was a scout for the kingdom, or at least that is what she owned up to being, before what happened to her. And we learn that this girl was just a kid, and we know that Negan hates when things like that happen to kids, so Negan decided to take it into his own hands to stop things like that from happening and possibly escalating even more. He had one shot to take the Croat out, but he missed, and it blew off his ear instead, and the rest of him got away. And Negan has not seen him since, of course, until now. So obviously the Croat did not get the iron like Dwight did and I thought we would learn he did as his ear resembled more of a burn than anything else but turns out Negan tried to flat out kill this guy. So we can assume that the Croat won't be very happy to see him. Finally seeing where this address is that Pearly kept taking a look at as he heads inside of a building and into a room. This room is clearly inside of an apartment building with old food boxes and cans laying around this room. And as he takes a look around we see that this was like where he lived before the world fell. As he looks at pictures around of his family and one with him and who I assume was his brother and one with his parents as well. He looks at a gun case and the gun case is empty. So he looks around some more and after looking at a few more pictures and glancing at a mirror, he sees that there is a body in the room behind him. This looks to likely be his brother who sadly took his own life. He ends up finding a beaded cross necklace which sort of reminded me of the one that Carol had back during when she and Maggie were captured by a few saviors themselves. He covers up the body with a bed sheet and puts the cross necklace over it, paying his respects before taking the gun and leaving out of the window and heading into the streets, as walkers were waiting for him at the door. But as soon as he walks through the alley, a trap activates and he gets captured inside of it. Cutting back to the bathroom as a bunch of ruckus goes on outside and Tommaso comes to get Negan and Maggie. We see that everybody here is packing and leaving and in a hurry. The two get blamed for bringing the Barats straight to them and Barats means brother or bro in the Croatian language. So this is the Croats group. Negan grabs Tommaso and puts the sharpened bone that we saw him sharpening in the bathroom earlier to his neck, but he lets him go as he assures them that they are there to help them, but they need to get going as the Barats start storming the building. Maggie and Negan Negan almost get caught by one of these guys, but they hide just in time. And as they head up these stairs, we see the brutality of these guys, as they use sharpened street sign poles as weapons. Once they get upstairs, they get in a little scuffle with some of these guys, where Amai takes one of them down with the grapple gun sort of thing, which is really cool by the way, and Luther takes the other one out after snapping their neck. Once again, he is clearly their muscle here. Getting to the rooftop with the rest of the group, where one of the brats is holding Esther hostage, where he eventually stabs her, ultimately 
ending her life. As Negan knocks a guy out and carries him back inside, saying that he will deal with this as Tommaso has to put Esther down before she turns. This is where the old season 7 Negan returns. As he walks out of the dark in a scene mirroring that of when he walked out of the RV at the lineup, where he smashes a guy's head through some windows, repeating knock knock to the other Barats who are storming the building, making fun of their appearance and telling a knock knock joke to them, telling them to get their umbrellas ready because it's about to rain. As he goes straight back to his roots and cuts the guy's neck, literally making it rain on the Barats. Super brutal. Assuring them that if he sees another one of their ugly faces, he will make sure that it's not just a rainstorm or even a thunderstorm, but a hurricane. This scene was incredible. But anyways, he turns around after killing the guy and putting on a show, just like he did back in season 7 at the lineup, as Maggie looks back at him as she watched him do all of that. And he clearly did not like doing that himself, as we can tell by his expressions, and this proves what he said earlier. He only does these things when he really needs to. Now nighttime, we see Jenny get up from bed and leave her room, using an old piece of bread to distract one of the guards at the settlement so that she can get on the dirt bike and leave. Obviously, we will be seeing her again as she is likely going back for Negan. And speaking of him, we cut back to him as he stitches his hand up, as he must have cut his hand during the whole ordeal earlier, and Amaya and Tommaso thank them all for their help. And they own up to lying about there being thousands of them, as these people here and the ones that they just lost are all that they have. We see Amaya give Tommaso a chai Hebrew necklace, which I assume used to belong to Esther, and this necklace and this symbol represents that of life. They say that if Maggie and Negan really want to get out of here, it's likely too late now, and they're stuck on the island, as the Croat and his men make sure to ensure that, where Maggie owns up to the fact that the Croat is the real reason that they are here because he has her son. Amaya tells her that they can help her get to the psycho, but only if they have a death wish. Obviously, the Croat and his people are the most known here, or we can assume, and they are very, very dangerous and brutal. Then, cutting back to Pearly as he still is in the trap as walkers are below him trying to get at him, a vehicle pulls up and Barats hop out and take the walkers out, then cutting Pearly down from the trap. The Barats disarms Pearly before he can grab his gun and use it, and then he removes his helmet. This Barats was the Croat himself, and he gives off that creepy vibe after telling Pearly that he is safe now and to not worry. Obviously, these two are not in cahoots, and I think Pearly will end up teaming up with Maggie and Negan against the Croat. The Croat walks off and sends his men to take Pearly, which is where this episode ends off. And wow, again, this episode was absolutely incredible, just like the first one. However, I do think I like this one more than the first one. But once again, the dynamics between the characters, this new cruel villain, and now his group, and learning these characters' backstories, and now the building of alliances and so on, make these two episodes so fun and so good. And I think that this show and these first two episodes really show that there still is a soul for this franchise and universe. And it's not dead whatsoever, like a lot of people say it is. Another very great episode for the series, and I am so excited for the third one. But of course, I would like to hear about your thoughts on this episode as well, so make sure to leave them down below. Thank you all for watching, and if you enjoyed our breakdown and review on this episode, don't forget to give it a like. And with that being said, we will see you all the next time that we go through and explore the nerdy multiverse.